Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are once again going to be talking about that major upcoming winter storm. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also highly recommend that you check out our very awesome Patreon page where we just made a post about that second upcoming major snowstorm that is going to potentially happen. And we looked to see some potential snowfall for North Carolina, Virginia, some more southern areas. So we made a massive post about that that you should definitely go check out in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know which state do you think is going to end up seeing the most snowfall with this snowstorm we're talking about in today's video? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and we're taking a look at our European models precipitation type and first things first, we're taking a look at about 6 a.m. here on Sunday and as you can see we get that first line of snowfall going on for the upper Midwest, that's kind of the one-two punch, it's the first punch in the one-two punch. Let's get started with that second punch, however, and as you can see by about 11 a.m. here on Monday, January 25th, you can see that we're seeing some moderate snowfall with also some freezing rain coming down there for Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa, uh, Missouri there as well. We're probably seeing a quite significant chance of severe weather down there for Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas by this point. We're going to talk about that a little bit later within this video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on where we're going to start to see this snowfall move up into the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and even the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast in just a moment. So we're taking a pretty big leap here. We're taking a look at about 1 a.m. there on Tuesday, January 26th. As you can see by this point, moderate to heavy snowfall for portions of Iowa and through northern Illinois, northern Indiana, northern Ohio, and then portions of Pennsylvania as well. Also southern Michigan, southern Wisconsin. It might track just a bit far south of you guys to get significant snowfall. We will take a look at my official snowfall forecast at the end of this video and also all of the modeled snowfall forecast according to all of them in a moment now let's just move forward with this as you can see by about i would say 11 a.m there on tuesday january 26th you can see plenty of snowfall going on for southern michigan to end the storm so there might be some tacked on at the end there but we're really starting to see the mid-atlantic get most of the snowfall by this point but as you can see by about 11 p.m there on t tuesday january 26th you can tell that this is looking a lot lighter than it previously did as of yesterday or according to some of the other models. We're going to take a look at a couple more opinions in just a moment. Here's that second snowstorm on the European model. I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek at that one. And as you can see, it does have this storm at about 6 a.m. on the 28th. Dive down there for portions of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. And really, the European model keeps it very far south. Look at that by about 1 or 2 p.m. here on Thursday, January 28th. We see moderate to heavy snowfall for almost all of North Carolina by this point. I live in Southeast Virginia. According to this model, it looks like it could go even too far south of me. Uh, we're going to be watching this storm very closely. So let's just compare real quick. Here's what the GFS is showing at about 1 or 2 p.m. there on Thursday. So you can see a massive difference in what they're calling for. Uh, you can see Northeast North Carolina and Southeast Virginia getting heavy snowfall according to this model. We're going to be watching this system very, very closely. And like I said, we made a massive Patreon post over there on the Patreon page about this storm. So if you want to see the snowfall totals, things of that nature, you can check that out on our Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the GFS model, play out that entire simulated radar there for our first storm. And then we're going to get into the Canadian model as well. And then we're going to start talking about snowfall total, severe weather, uh, freezing rain, and even my official snowfall forecast for this storm all coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at about 11 a.m. there on Sunday, January 24th. As you can see, we see that first punch come through uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, getting some snowfall there and even some freezing rain for Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. But as we move on towards about 7 p.m. on Monday night, January 25th, you can see that that second punch comes through, a 994 millibar low pressure center. So when I say a major storm, I mean that low pressure center is actually quite strong compared to what is typical for this time of year. Uh, really, this is on the higher end of a, of a stronger storm, honestly. Uh, we see Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all getting some pretty significant snowfall. But the problem here is this model likes to keep the freezing rain kind of mixed in with that snowfall. And this would create a very sloppy storm and a very hard to predict storm. But tons of freezing rain coming down, also tons of snowfall where there isn't freezing rain. Again, just a sloppy storm at this point. By about 7 a.m. there on Tuesday, we see moderate to heavy snowfall for Ohio, Pennsylvania, 
uh, portions of New York and New Jersey. So much stronger on that second end of the storm or the very eastern end of the storm compared to our European model. We're going to be watching this closely. Uh, so far, it seems like it can swing either way on that eastern end. We're much more certain about the western end than we are about the eastern end. Still a very confusing storm. We have a 999 millibar low pressure center offshore of the Delmarva there. Pretty strong, so that's why we're seeing that moderate to heavy snowfall. And by the time we reach about maybe 1 or 2 or 3 p.m. there on Tuesday, January 26th, you can see it's pretty much closing out with some moderate, light to moderate snow showers uh, for a lot of the mid-Atlantic and southern New England. And then again, here's that second storm rolling through on the GFS model, uh, which this is a very classic track. I want to tell you guys, I've seen this track happen so many times over the past 10 years. I think that's what I said on my Patreon page. It's, it's a pretty classic track. The thing is, I live in southeastern Virginia, so I know this storm track a little bit better than I know other ones. And I will tell you, oftentimes when we see this storm track, a lot of sleet likes to take place for northeastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Uh, especially where I am located. I hate to say that because I love snow and I don't like when sleet mixes in with the snow because that means less snow. Uh, but I'm just being completely honest with what this type of a storm track would usually bring. So I'm going to be watching that situation very closely. I could see a storm track like this actually taking place. It's a very realistic one and we've seen it time and time again uh, over the previous 10 years, like I said. So what we're going to do here is move on, take a look at that Canadian model, and then we're going to start getting into uh, the total snowfall guidance. We're going to get into the freezing rain after that, and then the severe weather, and then my official snowfall forecast and my confidence scale at the very end of this video. Many, many things still to come in this video. All right, now here we are taking a look at that Canadian model. As you can see, with this one, we have a 998 millibar low pressure center located over Arkansas at about 7 a.m. I kind of skipped out the first punch on this one because I think you guys get the gist. They're all pretty much on the same page with that. So we've gone right ahead and moved towards about 7 a.m. on Monday. We see plenty of freezing rain there in between the rain and the snow. So for Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. And then on that northern end, we are seeing some pretty moderate to heavy snowfall going on as well. Let's just take that to about 2 a.m. there on Tuesday, January 26th. And as you can see, moderate to heavy snowfall going on for Illinois, Indiana, southern Michigan there. So compared to the GFS, this would give southern Michigan a lot more. Uh, we see freezing rain there for actually the northern regions there of Indiana, Ohio, uh, and portions of Pennsylvania as well. Only northeastern Pennsylvania really getting in on that snowfall, including northern New Jersey as well, and then portions of New York State. So this one is much further north and would mean a lot less snowfall for those Ohio Valley regions. So you can tell the certainty isn't complete yet. We, we really do have a long way to go still with this one. We've been tracking this a long time, so that's why it just feels like it's dragging, trying to get some confidence. But my confidence has gone up a bit. And for that very northeastern portion of this storm, you can see it's much further north than the GFS or the European model was with this storm. And the interesting thing as we take a look at that second storm, it's also very much so further north with the second storm. The one we saw for southeastern Virginia and northeastern Pennsylvania there on our European and GFS model, the Canadian model says, nope, not going to happen. It's going to be much further north. It's going to be northern Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Jersey, and New York. Pretty much a similar track to the first storm. Uh, and anything is on the table. All possibilities are are valid at this point, especially if a model is showing it, it is possible. I do think that Southern track is a little bit more likely, but I, I am open to the idea that this could also occur for sure. And then what's also interesting about our Canadian model here is as you can see by about 7 PM there on the last day of January, which is going to be a Sunday, uh, we we see a third storm even come through there for the very far Northeastern regions. So we could have a lot to track here, a very active final portion of our January, uh, and we'll have to see how February goes. I'm hoping we have an active February as well. So what we're going to do here is move on and take a look at the total snowfall, the total freezing rain, the severe weather threat, and then we're going to get into my official snowfall forecast or my first preliminary official snowfall forecast in just a moment. All right, so first things first, we're taking a look at our European model. All you need to know is in the grays, you're expecting a dusting to two inches of snow. Within those blue shades, you're taking a look at about a two to six inches of snow. Within the purples, six to 10. Within the pinks, 10 to 20. And then you can kind of see those pastels there for Iowa, Missouri, and even Nebraska. That's where we're at about 20 inches plus. Uh, so this model is definitely thinking we're gonna have a lot, but look at the Eastern end. Not a lot of snowfall at all for the Northeast or the Mid-Atlantic with that one. Let's compare that to our GFS model. And this one says, wow, we're gonna have much less for the Plains, but much more 
for the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast, and the Ohio Valley. So there is still some disagreement going on amongst the models. Very, very interesting. Uh, and then the Canadian model is kind of a mix of the two. It says, well, pretty much everywhere is going to get a lot of snow, but it's going to be a big click further north there. So interesting here. We have some agreement for sure. It looks a lot more in agreement than we did see just yesterday or the day before. Uh, but still, there's a long way to go for these models to be in a good place where I will feel very confident. I'm not feeling that just yet. Let's take a look at that accumulated freezing rain totals. Uh, and you can see the numbers on the screen. So the lighter pinks is pretty minimal. But once you get into that second or third shade, that's where we're at about a quarter to half an inch, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. This one keeps us around a quarter of an inch to half an inch, which is still very significant as far as the freezing rain goes. Let's take a look at the GFS model, and as you can see, it has a lot more, actually. It gets into that third shade there for the Mid-Atlantic, uh, and that's going to be half an inch to three quarters of an inch, which is just a little bit more major, I would say. Uh, and then on our Canadian model, it spreads it out more, and it says half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Pretty widespread throughout the Plains, the Ohio Valley, and then even the Mid-Atlantic as well. We will be watching that freezing rain threat closely. That's a little bit harder to predict than the snowfall, so we're going to just have to wait and see with that. Let's get into the severe weather threat real quick. Here's our convective available potential energy at about 1 a.m. on Monday. Uh, so this threat is mostly going to be Sunday into Monday. We're going to be watching this closely. But for most of Texas, we have a 1,000 Cape Plus, even southeastern Oklahoma, and then western regions of Louisiana and Arkansas. That is a significant amount of Cape. So we're going to be watching this very closely. I am pretty concerned about this, actually. Uh, and then here's our simulated radar by that point. So you can see there is precipitation. There is storms in the area by this point, especially in northern Texas, southern Oklahoma, and then portions of Arkansas. So I'm expecting a severe weather threat, a pretty good one, actually. And then when we look at our shear as well, you can see very high shear. So unfortunately, I do think there will be the possibility for tornadoes. It's pretty early on, so it's hard to say what kind of level of threat we will have. But I know that there will be some level of threat. That's what I know at this point. I feel quite confident in that. Let's get into my official snowfall forecast, my preliminary one. This is my first one. Usually I would wait another day to release this, but I'm just going to go ahead and release it a little bit early, get my thoughts out there. We can always adjust later on. That's the beautiful thing about it. Here's our dusting the three inch region within this white area. We expect you to see flakes or more, basically see flakes or more. Uh, if you're outside of this, we don't really expect you to see much flakes, if anything. Here is our light blue region, our three to six inch region. So three to six inches of snow is expected within this light blue region, according to me. In this darker blue region, we expect 6 to 10 inches of snow, so you can tell on the southern extent of this storm, uh, we expect most of the heavier amounts. The northern extent there for South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the uh, upper peninsula of Michigan, that is mostly due to that first punch, which is going to be a lot lighter than that second round of snow. So that's the reasoning behind that. You can tell I have a little bit more snowfall for the eastern end than the European model does, but a little less than the GFS and the Canadian model do as well. Also, I'm a little bit further south than the Canadian model, but a little bit further north than the rest. So I'm going with a pretty in-between uh, outlook, which is actually the best way to go usually. Here's our 10 to 15 inch regions. So these purple regions is where we expect 10 to 15 inches of snow. You can see for Kansas up through Iowa and through Illinois, and then even a little area in between. Uh, I'm adding that because I want you guys to know there will be scattered amounts of 10 inches plus within that entire blue band. And then we can see for Pennsylvania and portions of Western New York, 10 to 15 inches as well. I expect some lake enhanced snowfall to occur there. Uh, and I do think 15 to 20 inches will be possible, uh, but I'm not going to add that just yet. I want to be a little bit more confident in the location before I go ahead and do that. So here's our confidence scale. We've upgraded from a three to a four. So we've crossed over to where we're about 50 to 60% confident, I would say. So we're at about a four, our historic first four confidence rating because we just made the confidence scale. So we've never had a four before. Uh, so the confidence is on the rise. Hopefully we have a five by tomorrow, if not the next day. Uh, and then eventually we can get to that dark green high confidence rating eventually. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is the maximum amount of snowfall we see from this snowstorm? And WX man Smith said 12 to 18 inches of snow. I think that's a great guess at this point. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Palemo, Adam S., Larry LaPan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Terry Curtis, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, 
Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, Mark J, Luke Vallego, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be on this patron end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.